and I'm coming from a super alpha profession where it's guys like me who like to go to the gym, get tattoos and shoot things and blow it up. You know what I mean? Kick doors in. And so when you get, when you get. So the, and I guess that makes sense. Cause like, if you're going in with different types of covers, like forms of American businessmen, so yeah. to speak, something like that, that does make sense. But still like when you get on the ground, I mean, you're, channel was initially called vigilance elite and mm -hmm. you talk about like hyper vigilance and things like that and maybe we can get to some of the some of the effect that that's had just due to your career and some ptsd and things like that and being hyper aware of stuff but like when you get on the ground somewhere new did you have a go-to list of i don't know three five ten things like behaviors that you would do outside of establishing a pattern of life to get full awareness of your surroundings and get comfortable with, with the area? Well, what do you mean? Did you have a strategy? Like I put you in a new country, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're going there for 45, 120 days, whatever it was. You drop on the ground, you've never been there before. It's a new mission, new people involved, whatever. Do you have like a list of things for your own personal checklist that you need to go through to be comfortable by day two there? Oh, yeah. I mean... First thing you need to do is figure is a map study. You need to figure out where you're at, what your the lay of the land, where are the friendlies, where are the safe houses, where's the hospital, what's our evacuation plan, what do I do uh, if I get hit here versus hit here, where are our friendly, where's all the government facilities that we're going to be working in and out of, uh, both foreign and 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 our own. You know, and so you need to be, when I would show up into a country, the first thing that happens is, is you get the lay of the land. You do, you do the map study, you figure out where all the sites are. You learn all the back roads. You aren't navigating off of, you know, the Google phone. maps yeah. or a GPS or anything. You should be able to, to navigate that entire city. I mean... If it, if it was a place like Philadelphia, it would take two weeks, and I would know it. The whole city in two weeks? Damn near the whole city. Is there like a mental like trick you do to be able to, to patternize that? You just do it. Mm. You start with the major routes, all the interstates, then you go to the... You know, then you go to the smaller state highways, then you get into the neighborhoods, then you section it off, you know what I mean? So this is, you know... This is, I, I don't know anything about Philadelphia. I've only been here for two, <laughs> two hours, but but you know what I mean? It's if, if it was New York City or something, you would know all the boroughs, right? And then you would, you, you, you would be able to section it all off and say, all right, these are the different boroughs. Now I'm going to get into each borough and learn each and every one of those. And so you just take it in sections, you know what I mean? But you also got to know which roads are one ways, which roads have people that regularly walk in them like a street square sometimes, which areas have construction. Like just in my head, thinking about a city like the size of Philadelphia that you're dropping into somewhere in the Middle East, that just sounds like. Yeah, it sounds insane, but yeah. it's not. I mean, you already know all the traffic patterns. You know when to go. You know when traffic's going to be heavy. You know the back way if there's a wreck, how to get home so you're not sitting in the traffic because you're a local, right? But. You've just accumulated this knowledge because you live here. You're not attempting to learn it. Mm -hmm. When you go to a place like that, that's your whole focus. I'm going to learn everything about this fucking city. You know what I mean? And you get Passover from the guy that was there ahead of you, and you give Passover to the guy behind you. You During that, that turnover, you know what I mean? You're helping this guy like, hey, stay out of this neighborhood. Maybe you don't need to know that neighborhood, you know? And... um and so there's a lot of turnover, a lot of tips, a lot of secret stuff that, you know what I mean? Not like secret classified stuff, but just just shortcuts and all kinds of things that you've learned during your time there that you can pass on to the next guy, you know? And so <clears throat> is that Yeah, that sense? answers that answers the question for cool. sure. Because, I mean, it just – there's so much that would go into these high-octane scenarios and the entire time you have to maintain a cover – like you can't get caught. Like you said, it was like 24-7, 365. I mean, when you're over there, every second counts. You make a mistake for one minute. That's it. You know, so 
the idea of, of a lay person like me trying to wonder about dropping into all these new places and getting all this information like that so fast and being able to have it like the back of my hand, it's, it seems like impossible when you think about it. But I mean, I guess that's kind of in a lot of ways, the intense training and, and hyper awareness you had to have as a Navy SEAL pretty much prepares you for that. I would guess. I mean, it's, it's not, yeah, it is. It is difficult. I'm not going to lie, but it's not as difficult as you think. I mean, I wish, I wish I could see a map right now, and I would just show you what I would do. You know, but let's let's, let's talk about like yeah, pull up Philadelphia. Yeah. Let's let's pull up New York because that's like a grid pattern. That's why I want to ask that. Let's one. let's pull up pull up something that's not a grid because most cities aren't a grid. All right, well, let's pull up Philadelphia. Let's go with you. Okay. Here we go. I'll put this in the corner of the screen for people to see. Cool. So you see all those yellow roads? Yeah. I could learn those in a day. Those are all your major thoroughfares, right? That's that's You're going to get anywhere you need to go in a hurry. You need to be on one of those yellow roads, right? They're the arteries. They're the arteries. How long do you think it would take you to learn that? Just that. I That I could do in a day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now you're starting to see it's not maybe as difficult as you think. Then after you learn those, then you're going to learn where's the shopping mall, where's the hospital, where's the police station, where's the military mm. base, where's this, all right? And then you just start yourself at different points throughout the city. All right, take me to the police station, okay? You know, and you get, you just use all those yellow thoroughfares that I'm talking about. Then you break it up in neighborhoods, in, in most important, most critical to least critical. So mm. let's say... You got northeast. Yeah. yeah, let's say we're going to be, all right, we got a lot of activity that we're going to be doing in Kensington. Well, so, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> you know, I don't know anything about Kensington, but you see what I'm saying? Yes. Then I'm going to go to Kensington and I'm going to learn all the different little streets and neighborhoods and everything inside all the businesses, all the checkpoints. What time do the businesses shut down? I'm gonna. They call it area familiarization. Then once I have, I'll probably learn that in a day or two. You know what I mean? Then I'll move to the next. All right, where else are we going? Oh, over here. Okay, get in there. You know what I mean? And and that's how you do it. You just break it down. So when you do it like that, it's not nearly as complicated as you might think. Hmm. Patterning it out, kind of like everything else. That makes sense. I don't know. I guess when you don't do this stuff, you start to think of like how, you know, it's kind of like that with anything complicated. It's like, how the hell do they do that? Like when I watch an engineer do something, I'm like, where the fuck, like, where do you even start? But then everyone's got to start somewhere, make sense of it. So yeah. that's, that's, that's pretty easy. But Just break it down. But when you are like working with, I mean, you mentioned like, obviously there's a lot of guys who are from all the different types of special forces and high level military across who are doing jobs like you but then you're working with the guys like Bustamante who are in that case career CIA spies is there was there ever a cultural problem there or was there always a mutual respect like how did you how did you experience that <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was definitely some cultural problems mm -hmm. but like like I said you're coming so <clears throat> agency likes to recruit from when I was there, Ivy Leagues. So, hmm. what does Ivy League produce? A lot of a lot of liberals, <laughs> right? <laughs> which is which is fine. I'm not I'm not going political here, but you have liberals, and you have you have you have to have tact, and you can't be blatant about things. Mm. You have to. And I'm coming from a super alpha profession where it's. Guys like me who like to go to the gym, get tattoos and shoot things and blow shit up. You know what I mean? Kick doors in. And so when you get when you get these type of personalities together, they they generally clash. That's not what I was gonna be talking about, but that's interesting. When I say cultural, I was thinking like the the like, oh, you're different. You're not us or whatever. But you're talking about even like on like a human level, there was just a whole different worldview, so to speak. Oh, yeah. That's interesting to me that that would, like the stereotype 
of what you just described would impact, I'm just going to name a random place here, some fucking mission in Abbottabad. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you don't really have time to worry about that stuff. At you least don't. that's what I would think. But when that stuff comes in, I mean, in the SEAL teams, if somebody messes up, you can be like, hey, what the fuck were you thinking? Why didn't you fucking go through that door? You didn't clear your fucking corner. What the fuck is your problem? Mm. You know what I mean? And and you can be abrasive and shame them and, and, and then lift them back up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that they don't fuck up again. Yeah. They need to know the severity of it. Yeah. If you do that shit at the agency with a case officer who just got recruited out of Harvard, you're going to make him fucking cry. And he's going to go whine to his to his superior, and then your ass is going to get in trouble. See, some of the guys I know in this space that I've dealt with, they're not that type. Like, I've had Jim Lawler in here, who's, he was 25 years He's an old nuclear school dude. Yeah. It's interesting to talk with you because your expertise was in the field undercover with nuclear arms deals and things like that. And it's like the whole reason we went to Iraq was because they had WMD and that turned out to not be true. That's exactly right. People ask me about that sometime. And it is it is true that Saddam Hussein had been working on nuclear weapons before then. He had used chemical weapons against the Kurds. The Kurds are an ethnic group yes. there in Iraq. Killed thousands of them. In fact, one of his cousins was known as Chemical Ali. And Chemical Ali used. Andy Bustamante, you know him. I mean, he's intense as fuck. Like, Andy he didn't have to. That. I don't believe Andy worked with us. I don't think he. I don't think he was in locations where we were. We were in the worst of the worst places. And so what you had is a lot of Ivy Leaguers coming into war zones just to punch their tickets so that they could get a promotion. Ah. Uh... Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, so they're not... And I'm not... And, and I want to be clear. That's not a hit on them. All I'm saying is you're getting two different cultures. Yes. Very different cultures. You're getting... I mean, the... Do you see what I'm getting at? Yes. I'm just shocked they would send that type of stereotype into the worst of the worst places. They have to. It's like I they also... need the experience. They need to get their people experience. And a lot of times those attitudes change, but my attitude changed... And their attitudes changed, and you you learn how to work together to get the fucking mission done. But yeah, for a while, it was a culture shock for me because I wasn't, for lack of a better term, I wasn't used to having to baby people. Mm. And there, you have to baby people. And how old were you when you joined the SEALs again? Uh, I joined when I was eight, 18, I think. Yeah, so yeah. this is like in your adult life. That's all. You, this I was out you know. at 24. But this is my point is like this is the attitude you know. Yeah. You don't know another real world where it's not like get your fucking shit together. There's no time for crying in the suit. Right. Teams. There's right. lots of time for crying at the agency. I'm still I understand people gotta get their experience, but that still does surprise me a little bit that they do it like that. Because I also don't want to comment on some things with Andy because I know some of that's still like classified. I don't want to fuck up, but we could talk about that offline. Like, you know, he was also a very he was just into different stuff than yeah, I was into. Yeah, you know what I mean? He was, he was a little bit more of a unique situation than just like some of the case officer stuff you're talking about. But still, like, as you said, to use your words, the worst of the worst places. I would think there'd be a little bit of a, of a people who have a reality check that this is not, you know, a you domestic have, issue to fight over. You, you have to get in the end, you know... Now I'm going to go on the defensive side and defend these guys, you know what I mean, who are coming out of Ivy Leagues. They don't know what they're getting into. You know what I mean? They don't – I mean, you don't see the shit that I see in the media. You know what I mean? So when they're showing up in a remote location in Afghanistan, I mean, the media isn't showing what right. ISIS is doing. The media isn't showing what al-Qaeda does to people. Wait till you see this shit that uh, I just interviewed this kid, Tyler Andrew Vargas, or Tyler Vargas Andrews, who was the Marine sniper uh, that got blown up during the Afghan withdrawal. And, 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 mm. and <clears throat> where do you see what he was seeing, like, during that? I mean, they had people 100 yards away from where we evac, just lining women up, lining kids up, lining men up. Literally just shooting them in the back of the head one by one. Jesus Christ. 
just yeah. executing people. You think they're going to put that shit on the media? Well, they no. did for a short time in like 2014, and then they stopped. So you get these guys coming out. They show up there. They don't realize how bad it is. They want. They just don't realize the, the, how 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 much of a threat it actually is, and so you have to show them. I'm obviously naive, but I'm pretty shocked that like again the people coming in out of college who I know, according to when you when I talk to these spies and some of the training they go through, they'll go through 12, 18 months of training. I'm kind of shocked that like the CIA doesn't wake them up a little bit with this. I, I know it's a whole different thing when you get there, obviously, but like still. They don't know where they're going. That's the thing. Like you can't, yes, they, the feelings are, un, are a thing over there. <laughs> it's, it's stupid. I'm, I come from a place where we don't give a shit about feelings. We just want the fucking job done because the security of our nation depends on it, you know, mm. and that, but they're not brought up like that. You know, they're not. And so, and they're not necessarily going to be working in places like that. They might be working in China or Taiwan, or they might be working, you know, the, uh, you, a lot of clash happened with guys that were working the Cold War back in the, in the Cold War days with what Russia. Do you, what do you mean clash? Because they've never worked in a, a hostile environment. They've worked in permissive environments. You know what I mean? Mm. They're working in cities like Philadelphia, mm. where you're not going to get shot at every time you walk down. Right. At least I hope not. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, but no, you know what I mean? Right. And and then they come to a place like like Kandahar, Afghanistan, you know, or Helmand Province, Afghanistan, or right in the middle of Baghdad in 05, you know, and and they show up and they don't they don't understand how bad it is. And then they do. Doesn't take long, but <laughs> they figure it out. You know, they're like, "Oh shit!" The culture guys, shock doesn't last. These guys might be onto something yeah. here. You know, and so it's it's. But you know, that was very extremely frustrating with me for me at the beginning, and then until I figured out, okay, I just you know I have to adapt. You know, mm. and and that's going to make me more effective. It's going to make them more effective, and they figure it out too. They figure out they hey, we have to adapt. Maybe feelings aren't as important as I thought they were, you know. And for me, maybe feelings are a little bit more important than mm. I thought they were. Meet them halfway a little bit. Yeah, you know. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.